Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and about what's next. It's a show that wants to ask questions, peel back the layers of our average everyday experience, and go beyond scratching the surface. We interview amazing people with incredible ideas and stories who have done wild, weird, and wonderful things. Remember that imagination shared create collaboration, and collaboration creates community, and community inspires social change. I'm David Peck, and this is Face to Face. So my next interview was an absolute delight. It's with uh, director Isla Antoniak, and we talked about her new film, Beyond Words. But in a way, we talked very little about the film. It's a stunning, gorgeous uh, portrait about uh, two lawyers working on refugee cases in, in Germany. And this is a film about about getting beyond words, it seems to me. This is a film about identity, and, and it's about uh, empathy. It's about communism. It's about love and, and, and self-creation. Uh, we talk about poetry and contrast and juxtaposition, and Slavo Zizek makes his way into the conversation. I mean, what's a conversation without some thinking uh, from, from Slavo Zizek? We talk about uh, plot and film and proposition and about how all of this plays into uh, the story and the way it's told. We talk about relationship and mystery and and, and parenthood. Uh, it's a it's a wonderful film, and you're going to need to you're going to need to see it. And I, I trust you're going to enjoy the interview coming right up uh, about the new film Beyond Words. David Peck Live dot com for more information about my writing and speaking. Face to face live dot ca for for a whole uh, new host of interviews there, uh, and also rabble dot ca for uh, information on uh, from a from a Canadian perspective uh, about. Uh, the world we live in, and issues that matter. Coming right up, Ursula Antoniak and her new film, Beyond Words. Well, welcome to Face to Face. We're joined by uh, another very special guest here at the Toronto International Film Festival. Uh, with us here today is Ursula Antoniak, uh, here to talk about her new film, uh, Beyond Words. Thank you, welcome. Ursula. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for Hello. Royal York Hotel here in downtown Toronto <laughs> on this beautiful day. Is it the world premiere tonight? Yeah, this uh, world premiere. I have a European premiere of my film in San Sebastian, but I also have a Polish premiere um, in Gdynia, so, uh, and then uh, and also a couple of other festivals, but uh, th this is the first viewing today uh, of the five years of fighting for a film. After five years of fighting uh, for the this film. Is, this is the day. So, so how are you feeling right now about that? Has uh, Before we get into talking about the film, we've talked a little bit about it before the <laughs> recorder started, but... Uh, yeah, of course, I'm very nervous, but it's kind of um, exciting way. Yes. You know, like, uh, because I'm very curious how people will uh, react, and curious in a way like uh, anxious, but but also genuinely curious. You know, I, I, I like Q and A's with 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 audience because I also like to ask questions to the audience, not, sure. only, not only get the questions from the audience. Right, but, right, right. Uh, but also very practical. For example, one of the first questions I always ask uh, the audience is like. Uh, were you were you bored by the film? <laughs> were you bored by the film? <laughs> yes, because I think it's the it's the greatest uh, you know uh, uh, mistake you know of the filmmaker if when you make a film that doesn't engage the audience you know. Interesting. Yeah. So boredom is high on your list as a filmmaker as a storyteller. Yeah. I mean, there are, you know there are filmmakers that it's something like uh, people call a slow cinema that that uses the boredom as a kind of. Uh, um, as a kind of a tool. The right? tool, um, yep. But uh, okay, but we, we are talking about very very special filmmakers, you know, who can do that and actually know how to do that. Uh, but it's not about only about the length, you know. It's not about the slowness uh, that makes it uh, non-engaging. But for me, non-engaging film is, is a film that doesn't um, doesn't go deep, you know. That it that it's shallow and it's not like a film that wants to only tell you the story, but the story doesn't have what I call. Uh, in the basement. Mm. The story mm. has to have a basement, like, like, a, a, like, a, like a foundation, sort like of. Like a foundation, like yeah. like like a house. You know, if a house doesn't have a foundation, you know, it it's kind of um, you know it can be it can disappear. You know, it can it's, it's not solid. So this solidity of the of the foundation of the film, it's uh, it's a thematic concern. What what is actually the film really about? It's not about this. It's not about the plot. Right, right. It's not about the story even, right? Because the story is like communicates something which is like beyond or above the story or like. Uh, so uh, if I see that the films don't engage me, you know, um, 
uh, either intellectually or emotionally or um, you know if a comedy for example you know uh, if it doesn't uh, if there is no uh, you know there is no flow there is no there is no exchange i think the exchange is a very good uh, a very good uh, keyword keyword not only to the cinema but basically to everything <laughs> like exchange when you say is, when you say exchange do you mean like a relationship with the viewer uh, or do you mean it's, it's, it, there is something like you know when, when you watch a movie it has to be this exchange when I'm, when I'm talking about this between your engagement in the film and the film and something that film proposes to you because film right, is always right. a proposition it's always a, it's, it's always an offer or proposition or something it's nothing uh, which is um, which is like a work of art that it's a uh, yeah, work of art is always a proposition okay i propose something and uh, and and, uh, and i'm not saying that it's complete that it's perfect uh, but it's my proposition right, right. Uh, so you say you like to ask audiences questions at q and a's is that is that kind of what you're doing as a filmmaker do you think you're asking questions of me as a viewer uh, you're asking questions of a culture of a society of of a, a way of life a world view question I, I, I think uh, especially in this film you know because it's, it's very personal to me it's about the subject that it's personal I only make a movies about something that I know mm -hmm. um, or I, I went through or uh, or some experience that um, I'm never I'm never autobiographic you know because if you if you're autobiographic you're almost pornographic you know you quote yourself so but I think every experience you know that that's 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 your tool as a filmmaker as a, as a director your experience that's kind of sublimated in um, in the stories in the, in the projects you know so when I when I when I use this this this, this experience this, uh, in a film, what I want you to do it's not that I'm asking questions, but I make you aware um, that there are certain things important for me. You know, it's a dramaturgy. Dramaturgy, for example, dramaturgy is, a, is an incredible tool, a filmmaking tool. That the thematic concern that I have, uh, that I want to pass it through to you, um, it needs to be dramatized. Right? It needs to have a drama. It's the, it's the basic element of every storytelling, sure. dramaturgy, yeah. you know. And a drama, what, what, what I see that people kind of confuse with, um, with emotions. Mm. You know, what drama is not about emotions. Uh, dramaturgy is about, um, uh, it's about, it's basically, um, it's about the relationship. Uh, it's about the relationship between people, you know, about... <laughs> Dramaturgy is actually the biggest, uh, the biggest mystery mm. of writing, mm. of editing, of making movies. Hmm. Uh, that that you have a feeling that it's something has passed through, that that it's a certain kind of content, a meaning, right. that right. the meaning is formulated. You know, actually, the, the director is the is, is the person. Other name for a director is the sense maker, someone who makes sense. Right, it right. Meaning. It's good. It's good. It's interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think you're talking kind of to me anyway. You're talking about uh, uh, an existential kind of intention, like an authorial intention, mm -hmm. right? That comes from within. Yeah. Right. It's not technical necessarily. It's it's uh, out of like you, as you said, it's out of your it's out of your experience. That's one of the tools. That you yeah. Bring. But it was also has to be like kind of a, uh, like uh, I'm sorry. It has also has to be kind of an impulse. Uh, kind right. Of a, uh, people say like. Uh, you hear directors uh, saying like, "Oh, I'm dying to make this film. I'm dying to make it's it's, it's really this is this is the right uh, <laughs> impulse, you know, to make a film. This it's like if you don't if you don't make this film, then it's gonna explode." Right. <laughs> right. So so tell us about this movie, Beyond Words. Uh, and by the way, congratulations. Oh, thank and you. And if I forget, wishing you well with the premiere tonight and, and the Q and A oh. and all. And I hope you get an opportunity to ask a question or two of the audience. Uh, so the film is not about the story you say that you see up on the screen necessarily, but it's about it's about something else. It's about something other. Um, and in this film, beyond words, there there's lots of words, and yet there's not a lot of words. There's it almost strikes me as a minimalist kind of a dialogue in, yeah. in a way, and very intentional, I would think, on your part. Uh, yeah, because what I, what I I, uh, I, I know four languages, right? And and what's for me, for example, one of the characteristics of someone who is immigrant. Is like, uh, for example, I write, think, dream, talk, in four different languages. Right. So for example, in my in my dreams, my mother talked to me in English, you know, which is which is real because she always knew, she, she only knew one language, uh, Polish. So so this kind of uh, language vertigo, you know, it's always very characteristic for for the for the immigrant. It's also it's kind of. Um, 
detachment, uh, yeah, existential kind of state, you know, that you have, uh, you are locked inside mm. in a way. Um, as an immigrant, you also have this kind of double, um, two aspects of your identity. You know, it's, right. There's the inner right. identity, right. so what I think about myself, right? But there's also this outer identity. So how people see me and how I think how people see me. Right, so right. This, uh, 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 so if I think that people see me as Dutch and I see that people react to me as a Dutch person, so it's normal for me to think, so I'm Dutch, right? And then suddenly, you know, one day, I'm, right, I'm reading about myself in the newspapers and I'm a Polish woman living in Amsterdam. So I said, hey, it's, <laughs> it's a kind of... so. You know, it's like this identity of a, of an immigrant. It's um, it's kind of the uh, uh, it's it's so natural for you, for example. Then you can say, okay, I'm a Canadian. Right. Or that. But for me, it's not so much uh, if I'm Polish or Dutch, but basically who I am. That, that's that's the big that, the, that's the big question for me. You know? And in this film, because we we started to talk about dialogues in this film, uh, for me, as as um, as an immigrant, to say something, to communicate communicate something. You have to understand that I've uh, that I kind of translated or looking for the right words in all the four languages that I know. So sometimes, for example, I, I really regret that I cannot use the Russian word. You know, there are some Russian words that are like exactly spotless. You know, that, uh, but, but in this film, the dialogues that uh, what 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 people s tell each other, um, they are actually very important. Uh, but they, they don't touch exactly uh, the, the, the essence of, of, of the... So, so is, is meaning then beyond words? Is that kind of the point uh, to, to some degree or one of the messages that you're communicating in this film? Yes, it's beyond words, but, but it's not about uh, how people uh, uh, you know, interpret this film, that it's beyond words because, uh, because of this immigrant film, you know, right. the, the immigrant team. It's beyond words because uh, the communication between the two characters, this, this father and son, yes. uh, it cannot be, it, it, it can never succeed actually, right? This, these two guys are bound by blood, but not by past. There is nothing between them, so they are two strangers. So basically, how, how can you, okay, there's a father who is a stranger, but it has all the symbolic meaning of, you know, of being a father, right? mm -hmm. but he's also like, the symbolic meaning of father. He's also the imaginary, right? What, uh, what Lacan was saying, imaginary, symbolic, and real. But he's also real. So he's this guy, uh, you know, kind of washed out and, and, and not very successful in life. And uh, so this tree uh, kind who's of who's supposedly been dead for a few years. Who's supposedly <laughs> dead from the. the, the I mean, as his, far as son his, is concerned, uh, his son, uh, his son always was uh, was growing up uh, believing that that his father was dead, and uh, when he found out, I. I when he found out that he had a father, so the character, uh, that the, the kind of person that he is, and I, and I call him like self-made man, like the character of uh, Red and Black, you know, like uh, someone who aspires, he sees his being German as a kind of uh, the kind of the aspiration, you know, something something that he deserves, you know, that he works hard to be treated as German and to be seen as German, but also like in the Red and uh, Red and Black, you know, he. He aspires to something, but deep down he also kind of dislikes what he aspires to. Right, right. <laughs> Which is, uh, which is basically a, a great recipe for, uh, yeah, for the catastrophe. Right. Right, right. Sure, sure. For disaster. <laughs> recipe. For a disaster. To, yeah, ca ca for catastrophe a disaster. is a good, good word. So M Michael Michel mm -hmm. is a, a Polish newcomer to Germany, learning the language, interviewing another newcomer yes. to Germany. Uh, and deciding whether or not that person, as a lawyer, mm -hmm. that person is allowed to, well, or that, not allowed to come into the country, that, but to make, take his case. Does he make case. a chance? Is He's not even going to, right, right. So, I mean, the ironies abound. Yeah, the irony is basically that, that the film opens with almost like a chess. Such a beautiful right? shot, too, by the way. <laughs> the, established, the opening shot of the film, that's just so it's, gorgeous of him against... It, against the, the wall with, his, the, with his bullets. Bullet holes, they are bullets. Yeah. I, it's, I wondered. It's yeah, the just bullet holes. This is, this is the, the place, it's the oldest, uh, uh, one of the oldest places in, in Berlin. It was the last place uh, that, that the fighting was taking is place that right, uh, eh? wow. in the Second World War. Everybody who, who was fighting there in this building died. And there was also, near this building, there were also the graves of the, of the German soldiers. They were not allowed to even come closer there. You know, it was 
very highly respected, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But the place has. Uh, I was I was thinking like when I saw this place, I thought like, wow, this is incredible irony that the guy who works in an environment that's all about money, he lives in such a close proximity of of Sacrum, that right. he that he hears the church bells four times a day. Right. You know, it's, it's kind of irony, you know. He, yeah, sure. he should know better. Right, right. That <laughs> he's so close. Uh, but, uh, but it's, uh, you know, in the beginning, when, when you have this, the, 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 the beginning of, of the film is kind of a chess like contrast between very, very white guy and, and can I use the word black guy? Because, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> because the, the, people, this, um, the African people who are, who are playing in my film, uh, I had a very interesting discussion, you know, about. Um, Political correctness, you know. Right, uh, right. Uh, so, for example, uh, what I learned, what I what I found out, that uh, how little we know, a European, about African languages. Sure. I didn't yeah. know that there are something like six hundred languages in Africa, and they are like it's basic. Pretty remarkable. Basic languages. How, how, they are how like, nuanced you know, and subtle right? it must and be, right? And we know nothing. And we know nothing. <laughs> exactly. We know nothing about their literature. And that's the you know? and, 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 and Ursula, isn't that the posture kind of to take? I mean, I think you know, having worked in development and so on for years and traveled to quite a few different countries, I think you know, I, listen, this idea of listening, mm -hmm. you know, take a posture where you know nothing, keep your mouth, you know, be, mm -hmm. you know, it's it, you're beyond words. <laughs> Right? Stay, stay, shut your mouth and, mm -hmm. and, and, and hear the other. Listen to the mm -hmm. other. Really listen to the other. And then maybe we can start to understand. Yeah, because when I, for example, I went to the poetry slum, black poetry slum in Berlin. And then we saw, uh, you know, poets, mostly from Nigeria, but also from mm. other African mm -hmm. countries. It was so, it was fantastic. You know, people were like on the, on, on the bune, on the stage, uh, reciting uh, poems uh, with music. But, but no, after it, I, I was speaking to these people, and I learned that oh my God, they have, uh, you know, Nigerian culture. I mean, they have literature. Man. They have they have the whole film industry. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they know nothing at all. Mm -hmm. You know, they were quoting films and series and mm -hmm. actors mm -hmm. and and uh, writers. You know, and we were like white people, and we were like, hmm. and I'm like, uh, we know nothing. I, I felt so stupid. You know, like uh, Ni Nigeria is a huge country and one of the most uh, one of the biggest economic successes I think in Africa. Actually, I was talking to somebody recently about the growth, not only of population wise, but ec economically Economic as well. Growth, yeah. yeah, it's pretty pretty remarkable. Um, so, so contrast for you is incredibly important. There, I, there's so many lovely, gorgeous shots in your film. I just uh, remarkable. But when when Michelle is is um, interviewing this mm -hmm. new, I guess potentially new German. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, well. Let's see. Let's see. If <laughs> let's see succeeds. what happens. <laughs> but there's this the way you frame this with the two windows and and the, what appears to be almost it's not a bar but the 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 wall. I mean, it just really sets up this t these two opposing worldviews. Yeah, it's, very, I mean, it's very radical. It's very, very contrasting. Very, very contrasting. Very sort of, you know, almost ready to, but yet, ready uh, for conflict. You but know? both, both these guys, uh, they basically believe in the same. Exactly right? right. Well, and we don't know. I don't think at that point that the the guy who's interviewing them is, is an, also uh, is a an new immigrant. German. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, but what, what, it was actually an idea of, of my cameraman not to put a translator in the scene, but to, <laughs> to put it, you know, uh, through, the the, the, through the phone. It's really interesting. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, I, I was always jealous, you know, I was like, why didn't I have this idea? This is a great <laughs> idea. This is like this voice, you know. It's that, like a uh, voice, this omniscient voice or something. It's really interesting. It kind of comes from, yeah, I yeah. don't know where. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it has this very... It must be the CIA. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it kind of godly authority. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, 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 do you see things like that in juxtaposition? Do you see things in in in, in contrast, kind of black, white, uh, up, down? Is or you don't strike me as a polarized uh, no, no, person. No. Like you don't. You, way it's, more nuance. Way more complexity and and, and subtlety. Way more uh, layered. Let's say. Way more um, layers. Yeah. But what uh, I've read somewhere, it's, it was it's a very nice line. Uh, Says uh, everything is lit up more in a contrast, mm. which is mm. which is very nice. You know, Interesting, everything is yeah. lit up more in a contrast. So, sure, sure. So I was thinking why identity is a very shadowy concept. Sure, There's sure, a lot sure. of layers and, and definitions, but being loved or not loved is like either this or the uh, zero one, right? So, right, right. So I thought like, okay, the problem of the of the main character. It's not if he's that, if he's Polish, if he's German, if, like for me, if I'm Dutch or Polish, it doesn't matter. But, but I think the problem of, of, of the, the, the deep reason behind the immigration of the main character, 
was uh, was being unloved. Mm. I think like if you if you're not loved as a child, you want to as a grown up, you want to be loved by the whole world. Right. And you you just, you just need this love. And 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 I think this Mihil told like I mean not like told like reasonably told, but maybe the idea in him it, 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 in the back of his head was like uh, okay, I wasn't loved by my father. Um, I make myself so not not the nature but the nurture. I make myself anew. I use this emigration as a kind of heroic, uh, heroic ethos of emigration. You can sure. go and you can make yourself anew. Fresh, fresh start. Fresh start. Yeah. Yeah. Fresh start. But it's also kind of you can create yourself. You can create yourself right. again right. with a different. Right. Right. Basically, you create a German version of yourself. Right. So right. you are in a German version. So the self-creating element is is heroic, but it's also. Um, not really complete. The guy is not complete until he uh, doesn't see his father, doesn't recognize his face well, in the face of other men. And, and what I love about it, and also what is unsettling to me, is that this well, in the scene where the father genuinely seems to be reaching out yeah. and hugging him, and and the son just does not reciprocate. There's just no way. Uh, the the his mm -hmm. hands are at his side, and so there must be, there, there's clearly some pretty deep. Scars, deep, deep pain, scars, deep emotional pain. You know, I interpret it this way. Uh, every time when my parents came to me to Holland, and I'm coming from a, a simple background, I would say, like not poor, because growing up in communism, I, I, I couldn't, I cannot say that I was poor. Um, my both parents were working. My, my father was working in a steel mill. Hmm. Um, my mother in a factory. And but but it's. You know, it's something like when when they were coming to me to visit me, uh, it was very, <laughs> it was very confrontational. It was like hmm. a primal scene of of emigration, the visit of your parents, right? Right. And then you see like how much uh, you changed, uh, what the big difference is uh, between you and your parents. And it's also in my case, I crossed the Rubicon of a social uh, status, right? I'm, I moved to a different uh, uh, class, social mm. class, mm. right? Mm. Um, so when my parents were, were, were coming visiting me, I, I, it became it became very um, very obvious, you know, that there is a, there is a contact between. I, I, sure, sure. But there are certain things that I cannot explain to them. Uh, they, they are cut off from some experience of mine, uh, right. from my right. joys, right. from my right. you know. Uh, it's the classic ch a child, son or daughter saying, "Oh, you'll never understand," right? To their yeah, parents. Yeah, but in, in this but in this case with the social uh, right. context, right. it's kind of uh, harrowing, you know. Mm. Uh, that of course they were happy about my successes and, and but but you know I, I was growing up in in me and my sister were the first people in my family who were buying books, you know, going to schools to study. Sure. So it's um but but this, uh, so so what I was my idea was uh, of for the main character that he's not so uh, empathic towards the father is more that he needs empathy uh, but it's very pretty much like like his father that he wants empathy uh, he can even show empathy but he cannot take or doesn't want to take responsibility for empathy. If you show empathy, you have to take responsibility. You cannot just show it, you know, you have to, it comes with responsibility. And both these guys, neither the father nor the son, they're pretty much the same, you know, they, mm. they wanted something and they, they are lovable people, I mean, especially the father, right? But even he cannot like take responsibility for what he offers, right. for, 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 right. for the emotions that he offers, you know? But there's also something else that um, I think, uh, when you're an immigrant, and basically every day uh, before you go outside and you, you join this Dutchess or Germans, you know, like you prepare yourself, you know, it's mm. like it's, in this film, you know, he uh, he repeats with the uh, German words, you know, right, uh, basically right. he practicing, he, practicing yeah, you know, he, he pronunciation, puts, uh, he puts uh, his armor, you know, the, uh, the words are also armor, you know, he's like a knight, you know, that goes out and, uh, but it's, it, it takes a lot of power and a lot of, you know, um, persistence to keep yourself together, you know, like this, with this language, uh, with this, uh, your different uh, identity. So, so, so when your parents come, you know, and showing them empathy is basically every time when my parents came, I had like a one week after they left, I was like, uh, I was like in pieces emotionally, hmm. Hmm. you know, hmm. <laughs> it's like, it's basically the, the, it's like like two films, you know. Uh, there is their film and my film, and now suddenly these two films like uh, 
intervene with each other, you know, like, right. what I'm supposed to do right. now, you know, right. in which right. film I am now, you know, like, and it's also the, the emotional um, price that I have to pay, you know, by showing this, this, this empathy. So I think this, this Michael kind of protects himself because mm -hmm. he thinks like if I show empathy to this guy who is practically a stranger, he's my father, okay. Well, is, and there's a sense to me too, Ursula, in, this, in the story where Michael wants to totally detach himself from his past, like he's, he's done. So when when his father comes over and and you know, I think there's he's standing on the balcony. He said there, there's there's nothing there's Polish. There's nothing yeah. Polish in here, you know. There's no there's no artifacts. There's no mm -hmm. art. There's no nothing. You've you've got nothing of your past, mm -hmm. in a sense. Um, is that I mean is that uh, I mean directly related to his identity, and then and then his legal, and then his partner says to him when he's talking to his father in Polish, which I also love. That's that scene where he says, "Oh, you're you're a different person when you speak in yeah. Polish." It's more like a child. More like a child, yeah. yes. That he goes, he kind of, uh, yeah, almost like uh, automatically you, you uh, and maybe this is, maybe this is what the, what the film is really about, that what this father does to him, he kind of uh, sends him back to the, uh, to the state of being a child. You know, he makes him, uh, he makes him vulnerable. He makes him vulnerable again. And yeah. so he cannot like... Uncertain. Uncertain, vulnerable. Um, this is a guy him. all about precision, right? Yeah. The way the way he irons his clothes. But also control and, very and controlled. power, right? Yes. And, and then this, this father creates kind of an emotional uh, vertigo, leaves, mm. leaves him, and then, and then he's supposed to return to his life. He will never do that. You know, because it's like something is uh, not really transformed or changed, but something is opened in him. The, the emotions of a child who was unloved, the emotion of a self-made man, mm. let's, let's, mm. let's call him by the name. I mean, he's a narcissist, right? I mean, the guy who asks his father, so, are you, are you proud of me? I right, mean, right, it's a kind right. Of, it's a half child, half narcissist. So the scene near the end, we're going to have to wrap mm. it up in a couple mm. of minutes, but the scene, the scene near the end where he, 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 he seeks violence, he goes out after yeah. violence, you know, he, he's, he's like he's physically demonizing the other when he knows somewhere that this has got to be wrong. Well, he's, he's seeking it. Is that his attempt at like self-flagellation? Like he's, you know, some sort of working out his own shame and guilt, you know, no, by, I by think he thinks picking like a fight? Just uh, in, a, in a scene before, you know, the guy, his friend, his boss told him like, look, uh, maybe you think that you're German, but you will never be German, right. you know? You belong to this group where you always belong, and this group is immigrants, right? And actually the group of immigrants, where well, you don't want to belong, but you do, uh, has these two sides, you know? You are on the one side of the spectrum, because you are very white and you can always pass for a German, but there is the other side of the spectrum, and there's this black guy, he can never hide. He wears his otherness on the sleeve, mm. right? And mm. even better, he's proud of it. He's proud of it, right? yeah. So and writes poetry about it. Right. I yes, mean, it's like yeah, pretty much yeah. uh, uh, relaxed about it and, and proud, you know. So this Michael actually cannot understand how it's possible. How do people leave, right? Like how, uh, why I'm have, why do I have to like, why this, 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 this edge in me, you know, to, to, to disappear among other people? Why this black people, they don't want to disappear. They, are, they, they actually, you know, the last, the last scene, you know, the, this, the end of the film takes place in uh, Neukölln, this district in, in Berlin. And it wouldn't be strange if this guy, you know, who's living in Charlottenburg, book, you know, this uh, kind of fancy place, that he might never been in this Neukölln, because Neukölln is basically a place where a lot of, uh, you know, uh, multicultural uh, things. So he has nothing to look for there in this place, you know. Right, so right. he goes there like almost like he's kind of spitted out to a rail. You know? Yes, yes. And that's a rail. Yes. You are one of them, right? Uh, so basically, it's it's not. Actually, the, the very interesting question I hope to ask uh, people tonight is if they think that the main character is a racist. Mm. This is a very interesting question. It is because, a very interesting uh, question. Because basically how he thinks is like, wait a second, this black guy comes here to Germany and he thinks that he has the same rights that I have, I have to work for this right. Yes, right? yes. So yes. That's, that's his thinking. And now the question is, is it racistic? I mean... It, uh, it's like, um, yeah, it is, by the old definition it is, but because of this film, you, c you kind of come closer to this kind of person, right? Sure, sure. You know where it comes from. Well, uh, you do have to ask the question as to why he was so uh, vehement about saying, no, I don't want to take this case mm -hmm. on, I'm not going to... to because take he thinks like, oh, uh, 
probably uh, this guy thinks like, oh, they're gonna look so nice and cold, you know, one immigrant is defending the other immigrant, oh, it's so beautiful, you know, and he kind of despises it mm -hmm. because he, he mm -hmm. wants to be seen as German, right? Uh, yes, yes. So that's, that's the reason. And of course, this is the very reason that he learns at the end of the film. Right, uh, and then it comes to confrontation with his friend, but also his boss. Yes, yeah. So this <laughs> kind of in the real world, probably he 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 won't be working anymore. <laughs> I have to ask you about the the the, uh, the scene, uh, the extended scene with his father, that the Michel and his father in the in the strip club. Mm -hmm. um, uh, made made me uncomfortable <laughs> thinking about what that conversation would have been like if it had been my my father and I. Which is maybe maybe what you were hoping for. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but but it was a fair, it was a pretty intimate scene yeah. between the two of them. They 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 clearly bonded. They clearly uh, had things to talk about. Yeah, they, they uh, kind of uh, 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 there was an intimacy there. Yeah, there's intimacy. They they, they they kind of liked each other almost, and you know, kind of accept each other. Or yes. kind of found each other like the guys can find each other. Oh, it's a nice nice guy. I could, I could drink with him and I can have a laugh. You know, it's like, so it's almost like a camaraderie. You know, yes, like, uh, yes, between yeah. the two guys, right? Yeah. And then he has this child slash uh, uh, um, question like uh, uh, basically are you uh, uh, are you proud of me uh, and what this guy can tell him he says he says yes and no at the same time I am proud of you because you achieved this but actually I'm not proud because what you achieved is it's just money. <laughs> well, well it's, it, it, to that point earlier in the film, doesn't he say something? In fact, I wanted to give you something, but but clearly you you, you, have you already everything. have everything. And this poor guy wants to give him this this watch, which is have different value than than money value. You know, it's a sentimental yeah, value. Yeah, of course. You know? Because you ask about why why this this this, uh, this character doesn't keep any uh, Polish things in his apartment. I don't know. It was a Deleuze who uh, Deleuze who who. who it was, he, he said something about uh, memories and reminders of memory, you know, that... that um, reminders of memory is a re great phrase. <laughs> <laughs> reminders of memory. No, it's like um, when you keep, for example, uh, souvenirs. Yes, right, from yes, the holiday. yes, yes. Yeah. And I think Deleuze was saying, like, uh, uh, don't, don't keep the souvenirs. I mean, let the past just pass. You know, mm, like, uh, mm. Don't keep anything because you kind of... Uh, um, you make an object. Out of right, the past, right, right, right. Which is dead. Wh right. Which other uh, Baudrillard? I don't know if you've read any Baudrillard, but if you're going to bring up the news, yeah, I'll, br yeah. I'll bring up Baudrillard. But yeah, I love the whole Baudrillard. idea of Seduction, hy really. hyper reality and, and yeah. simulation and the whole idea of the, of the image and the mechanically so, like, reproduced image, right? right? So because, because which is a funny conversation to have with a filmmaker. <laughs> oh, I love Baudrillard. I was like in the 90s, I was. I was Practically, I, read, I was trying to read everything. Of, Is that of right? Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my third film was uh, basically based off, uh, not based, no, inspired by his book about seduction. Ah, okay. Fantastic. Interesting. I mean, if only feminists could read this book, you know, and learn some lessons. <laughs> this guy because he's well, saying incredible things well, he is saying incredible things one of the harder guys to read that I've ever read next maybe yeah. maybe Heidegger uh, Emmanuel Kant I also found very difficult oh, Hegel. In my, Hegel, Hegel very challenging without a doubt I love I love the fact that Baudrillard can write one sentence and take up a whole page that's what uh, I like that he writes <laughs> almost like a poet he does know? write almost like he, a poet he absolutely writes evocative which is very which is really interesting coming back to our sort of full circle to what we started talking about with respect to film and the language of film and 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 intuition mm -hmm. and, and feeling and emotion and so on. I, I want to try to bring it uh, to a close here, sadly. Um, but there's a question that was kind of for me almost not out of left field, but a very ethical question that uh, Michelle's partner, I can't remember his name, said, you know, imagine coming to a country in a boat mm -hmm. and it capsizes. Mm -hmm. And and it kind of that classic laugh, lifeboat, mm -hmm. who, who, lifeboat question, yeah. who are you going to help? Which is essentially the position of power that they're in. Yeah. Um, is that... Is that a question that is being asked in a, a meaningful way around the world, do you think? I mean, clearly Europe, the refugee crisis yeah, is a problem. Uh, it's, it's, it's a problem everywhere, it's, right? Uh, it's, I think, Badiou. Yeah, Badiou says, like, uh, uh, whoever is here is from here. Whoever? Uh, whoever is here is from here. Ah, uh, right, right. <laughs> so right, it's basically, it's right. like, uh, I'm, you are coming here, I'm from here. Yes, okay. there, are no there are no immigrants. There are no immigrants. There are no immigrants, Yeah, yeah. But then Slavoj Žižek says, like, yeah, it's very nice, but uh, imagine that, uh, like, the, the rest of the world, outside of Europe, think like that. And then it comes here and wants to say, like, uh, it's nice that you have all this European value and this humanitarian value, but you want them too. Right. 
And then it's like, uh, I don't know, 10 million people comes with, with a very reasonable demand, right? Uh, we want the same rights as you. So this question is, is very important for this film, but indeed, like, who are you going to help? You're going to help off the, by the heart or by the reasoning? Right. For example, right. uh, there is a great story, for example, in, um, during the occupation, during the Second World War, there, was a, there were great efforts made to save a Jewish poet from the ghetto. There was a guy who was a poet. And actually, a lot of people you know, were risking life to save the poet. Mm. I always remember this. It was it was really striking for me that uh, that there is in the ghetto is this mind, you know, this, yes, this we don't talent, lose. you right, know, right. that it's it's a kind of uh, almost like an angel, you know, that we have to right. preserve him because right. in, in him is like much more than, than just life, you know. It's it's, a, it's so I thought like, okay, now it's just, it's this boat, and now if you ask me, I would always I would always no, I would always have a problem. <laughs> always like, but my heart would be like going maybe to a child or to an older person. You know, it's, uh, I don't have children, so, so it, I have this... It's a question I don't think any of us really wants to ever ask if it, if it has to play out in the real world, but I think it is a question worth asking yeah. of students and our children and our parents, and it's, it's something to think, it is something to think about, and it's I think it's why... Not, not even to arrive at, 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 at answer. At an answer, no, no like absolutely. It's about, it's about that conversation and being able to say, I have actually thought through some of these things, and I mean, if more of our politicians we're, we're, we're reflecting on these kinds of questions in a, in a meaningful way. I think I think we'd be in a better uh, in a better place. Wow, uh, a little too uh, idealistic. We, we, we we'd be, be in a different place. <laughs> we would be, we would be prepared. You know? We'd we, be prepared. We there you go. Nice for some uh, yeah. uh, for some uh, uh, things that might happen in life. Uh, it's good. I love I love this idea of preparation. What a nice way to sort of. Uh, uh, end, end the interview and thank you so much for your time today you. uh, talking with Ursula Antonia about her new film Beyond Words uh, world premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival thanks for your time today thank you, thank you.